Our product will be suggested projects that will follow up in the new year and over the next five years that will help you reach your goals as a, as a school of mining and geology. And for each of the projects that's chosen, um, there will be experts from Canada coming to support you. I contacted my friend in recruitment at Oyotoboy and I said, can you send me current role descriptions for entry-level geologists and engineers? So junior engineers, I went through the, the descriptions and I pulled out the skills. And these are just samples, but the thing I noticed, there was about that much, about 20%, technical skills. There were a lot of requirements for thinking and communication, safety, interpersonal skills and leadership. There were more requirements in those areas than there were in technical. If you look at the technical skills, they want, well, in my, uh, mining engineering, drill and blast experience, open pit or underground exposure, mine planning and production experience, hard rock mining exposure, and with geologists, it's similar. It's exposure or experience in different aspects of mining. How do students get that when they're in a university? Thinking and communication, they expect people or the graduates, the junior engineers, junior geologists, to be able to communicate verbally and in writing to be able to solve problems and to be very good planners. The other thing, because the language of business at Oyotoloi is English, they say English proficiency preferred. They don't require it. But if they have a choice between a junior engineer who speaks English and a junior engineer who does not, they'll pick the one who speaks English. With respect to safety, yes, they get safety training at the mine site, but they would like to have people who are aware of safety, who can identify hazards, and who know about safety standards, and who are ready to have a safety focus and support the safety programs that they have. With respect to interpersonal skills, they want people who can work very well, not just with their work team, but with lots of different groups. People who can work with community stakeholders, with contractor employees, with senior people, with junior people. And especially in the case of geologists, often geologists are working in places where there aren't, they're not cities. There, there are communities who never, or don't see people from the outside very often. So the, the junior engineers have to be able to know how to develop relationships with other people in the communities and maintain positive relationships, how to communicate with people outside the mining industry who have interests in it. They also want people who can get projects done, who can work on projects, get them done on time, and take the initiative on their own, not be told every step of the way, now do this, now do that, but someone who can say, like my daughter discovered when she was working on a farm in Mongolia, she worked on a farm a couple of years ago out near Darhan. The cow was walking out and going down the yard, and the guys were standing there, and she said, where's the cow? And they said, cow went that way. She said, you didn't stop it? What you need is not just farmers who have common sense, but junior engineers who, when they see something happening, they can do something about it. They think, ah. Cow just walked out, somebody better stop that cow. <laughs> Leadership skills, even though they're entry level engineers, even though they're junior people starting with the company, they need some leadership skills. They need to be able to model for other employees that 
business focused, get the job done kind of behavior, and ethical behavior, getting the job done in the right way. I used to work in the government, and in government everything goes really slowly. I moved to work for a mining company, and it's boom, 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 boom. Here's your goal, here's what you have to do, get your resources, and finish it by then. It's fast. But the thing that's even faster is change. New equipment, new programs, everything goes fast. So any young junior engineer has to understand how change works, embrace change, but also learn to lead change. And one of my, my um, interns actually said the hardest thing he did, harder than any of the projects he did at university, was helping or trying to get experienced miners to do things differently. And our junior engineers are also expected to manage work teams. If they're doing a project, they might be managing the project or a small group of people or contractors from another company. One thing that they need in the inter interpersonal skills, Daniel Goleman, who's quite famous for writing about emotional intelligence, soft skills, says that the CEOs, the leaders, the their top leaders, 80 to 90 percent of their competencies or what they need to know, their skills or competencies, have to do with working with people and emotional intelligence. They have lots of experts working for them that have the technical skills, but what they need is the people savvy. I bought this book last week because it explains in it, it's all about CDIO. I know you're using that in your curriculum changes your curriculum development. The book's called Think Like an Engineer, and it explains CDIO. The whole book is about that, but a large part of the book is about what else engineers need, and they focus on emotional intelligence, which can be described as self-awareness, self-management, social awareness of other people, and managing the relations with other people and groups and businesses. I want you to imagine that you wake up tomorrow morning, and when you wake up, everything was perfect. Your students were keen. Your students were excited. All of the businesses wanted to hire your students because they were the best. Not just small businesses, but all the international all of the international businesses around the world wanted graduates of the geology department, geology, hydrogeology department at MUST. Everybody wanted them. The students think your courses are perfect. They think they're wonderful. They want to come to class. This is, I think, every professor and teacher's dream. But what, what are the students doing? What are you doing in a perfect situation like that where everything is the way you could possibly want it. What, what does it look like? So my next question is, okay, that's the ideal, but what is it like now? What's it really like now in your university? In terms of fostering thinking and communication, tell me about that. What this brings to my mind is that there are other skills the students need, especially those who are below 80, because they don't know how to manage their time. They don't know how to take the initiative. They don't know how to study and analyze the documents so they can get 